I feel that this war has become a turning point for me. I need to be more sure of myself, make the most of the time I have left, stand up and make myself heard. The Tilbury Ladies' Choir is a bracing tale of bravery, camaraderie and downright rivalry set in an English village in the Second World War. Party Granny was this wonderful, jovial character. Um, it was quite plump, and uh, she every time there was a party, she loved parties. She'd put on this wonderful dress and um, and high-heeled shoes, and she'd totter around. She'd put on a posh accent, like she was at the Queen's Royal Garden Party or something. Uh, so she was a young woman during the Second World War, and. Um, and she just said it was the best time of her life. Um, and in fact, a lot of the women that I interviewed also said that as well, that it was the best time of their lives. Uh, my favorite character would be Kitty. Um, I think maybe I can really access the 13 year old inside me, but it, I just found it, she was so entertaining and it just seemed to trip off the tongue for me, the precocious, witty, ridiculousness of her. I took her out of the um, traditional narrative form uh, so that she basically writes as if she's making notes. She'll have little side headings and then she'll say what she has to say about one particular thing like her sister Venetia. So in the 1930s before the war, the, uh, a woman, the job opportunities were very limited. They wouldn't be secretaries, they would be more administration and shop girls. And then once you got married, you would be expected to give up your job to look after your husband and, and have children. So when the war came along, the British government realised very quickly that they were going to have to galvanise the female population into work. And suddenly there was an awful lot of a, a switch around in the way that people saw saw women and suddenly there was a lot of movies, there was a lot of propaganda, a lot of advertisements suddenly depicting women as being very capable, academically rigorous kind of people who were very capable of doing all the things that men were doing. So it was almost like this complete flip around. She evolves hugely throughout the um, throughout the story but at the beginning she's such a combination of opposites so she's very reticent and she doesn't want to speak she's very shy and yet she's bursting with all these things that she wants to say with mrs tilling it's all very carefully considered and beautifully worded and in a way she was a joy to write because it was so literary and i could really put in those beautiful literary descriptions. I've spent more time contemplating my own values, asking myself questions that I thought I'd always known the answer to, that juxtaposition between society and humanity of what it is to be human in all its guises. Mrs Tilling, is, there she is, she lives in a small town all of her life and suddenly the, the war has forced her to, exposed her to a whole different set of people and she's very frightened of the upper class because that's the way that she's been brought up. She has a, a set of criteria of how she thinks about homosexuality even though she's never actually thought about it before. She has been told what to think about it. She says that her deceased husband told her that there was something wrong with these people and she just went along with that. She just believed it and she had never really had to challenge it because she's never actually met someone and then she meets this, meets this dying young man and she starts to question whether there, there is actually something wrong with them. Um, um, he's not really a monster at all. He's someone who has died for his country. So the women uh, coming together as a group is a very important part because in the 1930s before the war started, women were very much almost isolated within their own family situation. And so when they got married, they, were, they would be isolated in these you know, small family homes where their husband would be in charge, basically. The other, the women during the war, they became the new family for a lot of these women. Um, a lot of the women had their husbands, fathers, sons away at war. And, and so they relied on the other women to be their family. 
during the Second World War, uh, particularly during the Blitz, Hitler's idea was to try and blast Britain into submission. Um, he was very annoyed that um, Churchill and the, gov the, the British government hadn't gone for, the, gone for a peace, an automatic peace treaty, which means that the Nazis would just take over um, in June in 1940. And, um, and a lot of the Blitz was basically a reaction to that, where he said, well, we'll just blast them until they, un until they do surrender, basically. And so the British, the British public, particularly the women, were there saying, we are going to stay strong and stay happy and stay cheerful through all this so that he doesn't know that he's getting to us and we're never going to surrender. But if we don't think about our death until we die, how can we decide how we want to live?